The Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022 is one of the most highly rated, most reviewed, most sold gaming chairs in the world. And in my opinion, it's the best racing chair currently available. The problem is that there's chairs like the Asus Destrier coming out. Does it have the chops to dethrone a chair like the Titan? Let's find out. I would consider the Titan Evo to be the most well-built racer that I've seen. It's gonna have the best components, the highest end upholstery, and the most technology out of any racing chair that I've used. The Destrier isn't gonna be that high-end in the world of ergonomic chairs, but it's still a better built chair than that Titan Evo. This is reflected in the price, but unfortunately not the warranty. The Destrier costs quite a bit more at $899 compared to the $549 Titan, but your warranty on the Destrier is gonna be dependent on who you buy the chair from. Our warranty only came with one year of coverage, which is the most disappointing thing about the Destrier in my opinion. The Titan doesn't have the best warranty, but you do get three to five years, which is obviously better than the more expensive Destrier. The biggest difference between these two chairs is the overall design choice. The Titan Evo has the typical racing style gaming chair design, while the Destrier has an ergonomic chair design that was made to look like a gaming chair. I much prefer the choice to start with an ergonomic chair as opposed to the racer. The design is just more functional and much more in line with the way the highest end chair manufacturers design their chairs. The first area we see this is how you sit in each chair. The Titan is designed to hold you in the chair. There are pronounced side bolsters on both the seat and back. While the bolsters on the seat are soft, the ones on the back are not. This really locks you in the chair and closes you off from having any freedom of movement. When we compare this to the Destrier, we see the opposite. The Destrier does not have these side bolsters, so it allows you to move around much more freely in the chair. The next major difference between these two designs is going to be the way the chairs recline and tilt. Because of the racer design, you're limited to the most basic tilt mechanisms. The Titan uses a knee tilt mechanism. This is better than the alternative, which is a center tilt, which is what we see on most racers. But this isn't my favorite recline method. A knee tilt recline will tilt from just behind your knees. The back and seat remain at the same angle through the whole range. While this can be comfortable, it's more limiting than a synchro tilt mechanism found on most ergonomic chairs like the Destrier. As you can see, when I recline back in the Titan, my knees come up and my feet are close to coming off the floor. This is bad for ergonomics. A synchro tilt mechanism reclines the back further than the seat. This helps to open your hip angle, keep your feet flat, and puts you in a healthier position through the entire recline range. The one thing you do gain with a racing design is the ability to tilt back independently of the seat and make the back go almost completely flat. I personally don't find this to be useful with the way that I use my chair at work or home, but if you need something to take a nap in for a bit, then this may be a pretty big advantage. I will say that the Destry reclines back quite far, so it may not be that much of a difference depending on how flat you wanna go, but if you wanna go completely flat and take a nap in your office, then you probably need to lean towards that racing style chair. When shifting focus to the seat, this is another area where these chairs differ quite a bit. The Titan Evo has a padded design with side bolsters that we touched on earlier. While the side bolsters do hold you in one specific area, they are soft enough to use the whole seat if you'd like without feeling the discomfort of a metal frame like on most racing chairs. The one thing I cannot stand with the Titan Evo seat is how hard it is. I prefer a firmer sitting experience. My top three chairs of all time are the Leap, Embody, and Fern. They all have firm seats, but the Titan Evo takes this to the next level. It's just way too hard for me to get comfortable in it. The Destrier went with an all mesh seat design, which isn't my favorite design choice, but I will say that this is one of the better mesh seats I've used. The front foam pad isn't a problem like I found on chairs like the Hiken or Aeron Classic. The mesh is good quality, so it's soft and flexible. It does have the problem with the hard outer frame that you do not want to sit on, which does limit the seat surface area and takes away any potential flexibility in the seat. While this isn't my favorite seat, I do prefer it over the Titan Evo. The arms on both chairs are quite good, but I do have to give the edge to the Destrier just because of how much more adjustable they are. Both chairs have nice pads though. I think the Secret Lab chair did a great job with their pads. They're large, soft, and comfortable for long hours. They're also easy to replace if you wish to do so because of the magnetic system that they used, which is pretty cool. The Destrier also has good pads. They're equally as soft, and they also have a good shape to provide large surface area. 
One cool thing that Asus did was add additional padding where you would most likely place your elbow. I especially like this design choice because I lean on one elbow quite a bit when using my chair. The major separator between these two chairs' arms is the adjustability, or more importantly, the adjustment ranges. The Titan Evo does have the advantage when it comes to the number of adjustments overall because you get four-way adjustment compared to the three-way adjustment on the desk rear. The problem is that the ranges on the Titan are not very large. This is not the case with the desk rear, quite the opposite. While I have a hard time using the Titan arms because they don't go low enough or narrow enough, the desk rear was much more comfortable for me. The arm height range is huge, which allows them to go low and out of the way or high enough to use for mobile gaming. They also have depth adjustment and they rotate 360 degrees. This makes them super versatile for a wide range of gaming and tasking applications. The final area we're gonna look at is the backrest and headrest. We touched on the rigid closed design of the Titan compared to the open concept on the Destria already. The backrest shapes are also quite different though. The Titan has a completely flat backrest with a built-in lumbar system that functions similarly to a car seat. The desk rear has a curved backrest design, which does a much better job supporting the natural curve in your back. It also has an adjustable lumbar system. Both chairs have height and depth adjustable lumbar, but the desk rear allows you to adjust the tension independently on both sides, like the Herman Miller Mira. While I think the backrest is better on the desk rear than the Titan, I do like the headrest on the Titan compared to the desk rears. The only reason for this is because the desk rear headrest will not hold its position. It has huge adjustment ranges, and I like the pad, but no matter how I try to use it, it moves to somewhere I don't want it. While the Titan just has a high back design with a pillow, it's usable, and the pillow is super comfortable. The magnet system they use also has a huge improvement to it as compared to the strap system on most racers. I think the Secret Lab Titan Evo is the best racing gaming chair currently available on the market. But with the introduction of ergonomic chairs that look like gaming chairs, like the Destrier, I think it is becoming really difficult to see a reason to go with a racing design. You no longer need to sacrifice build quality, ergonomics, and comfort to get a chair that looks like a gaming chair.